All right, looks like we are live. Um, let me just get myself sorted here, making sure the live stream is working. All right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Okay, so let's begin this uh, little workshop, this YouTube Live. Um, the topic of this YouTube Live will be the death of dating for women and what you can do about it. Uh, by the way, um, just let me know you can hear me and that the audio is clear. And uh, if you're joining in, let me know if you are in a relationship or if you're single. And uh, yeah, so we can get started. Happy Thanksgiving. Um, I don't think we celebrate Thanksgiving so much here in Melbourne, Australia, but um, I, I don't... Uh, I'm not even sure exactly when it is. I always thought it was the the end of November or the beginning of December, but uh, I wasn't sure exactly. Was it was, was there a, a specific day that is Thanksgiving, or is it a period of time? <laughs> all right, all right. So we have people from LA. Fantastic. Fourth Thursday on November. Okay. Well, thanks. Happy Thanksgiving to, to everyone watching. Um, okay. So the reason behind me wanting to do this YouTube live is because we sent out a, a survey and you may have gotten that survey. You may have filled it out as well. But for the people who didn't receive it or didn't fill it out, um, we, we, uh, asked everyone about the frustrations of dating in this day and age, especially with so many dating apps and social media and, and Instagram and, 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 uh, and what women felt about the whole dating scene. And the responses we got were um, astounding. We, I, was so, I was so surprised. I mean, I, I knew the struggles, but I didn't know it was this, um, this bad. Uh, especially now in in you know with with online dating being as popular as ever um, that there has uh, that there is bigger and bigger challenges especially for women um, trying to find a good man um, hello everyone uh, Nova Scotia cool very exotic uh, Alexandrine says, love your emails and website. No problems. And by the way, guys, if you have any questions, just um, type them in and I'll try and address as many of them as we can. Um, uh, Rita says, dating in your 60s. Yes, I'm sure there are some challenges there in this day and age. Um, all right. So before we get started, actually, um, I thought we could do a quick little giveaway. And uh, here we go. I've got our Triple Your Radiance program in a DVD form, which is brand new for us. Um, I want to give away a copy of this uh, to the person who can guess at what age did I learn to ride a bike? Um, it's not a trick question. What, and the reason behind this is um, that, you know, for, for some of us, uh, certain things come easier than others. And for me personally, uh, no one ever taught me how to ride a bike until um, I was well and truly out of my childhood. Um, and I guess for most of us, there are certain things that come naturally to us and there are certain things that do not come naturally to us. And if dating relationships, something that comes 
naturally to you, great. But if it doesn't, you know, it's something that you can learn, it's something that you can get better at. Um, for most of us, we probably didn't have the best role models growing up. So it is easy sometimes to, uh, to just get the wrong ideas and have the wrong points of reference uh, when it comes to love, dating, attraction, relationships. So the person who guess, or well, I guess if more than one person guesses correctly, then we'll send out multiple copies of this DVD, Triple Your Radiance. The promise of this uh, program is three steps to instantly triple your feminine radiance and become magnetic and mesmerizing to masculine men. So we'll give you guys just one minute. Just exact age, I guess, will be uh, <laughs> will be a good idea. Okay. Miriam says nine. Teresa says five. Christina says four. Lindsay, 11. Uh, 16, five, 22, 12. 21. I, I do believe I mentioned this, actually. So if you... I do believe I mentioned this in one of our e either emails or programs. Um, okay, so the correct answer here is 25. So everyone who guessed 25, uh, we have a few. Teresa Monroe, Cheryl Cooper, and Adri Cray. Um, you've won yourself a copy of Triple Your Radiance. Just... Um, if you could, uh, the winners, just go to uh, our help desk, shangwaymedia.com slash help desk, and uh, just send an email through and we'll send you a copy of this DVD. So the reason why I wanted to bring that up is because, um, yeah, there are certain things that come easier to us and there are certain things that don't. And, uh, um, you know, I was... Uh, I was uh, I, I never uh, growing up. I never had a bike to practice on, and uh, it got to a point where people looked at me funny because I didn't know how to ride a bike, and whereas everyone else did. And I got this idea, this belief in me that, oh, there must be something wrong with me. Why don't I? Why why can't I ride a bike? And it's not like, um, you know, it's not like the, the skill of bike riding is. Um, <laughs> it's something that you can pick up in the you know in ten minutes. It's something that you have to practice. That's why kids have training wheels um, for a long time. And so every time I tried, you know, people people were really encouraging. They're like, "Yeah, just give it a go. It's it's really easy. See, I can do it." And I would try, and obviously I would fail miserably because you don't you just don't pick up the skill of uh, uh, riding a bike in ten minutes. So I I got this idea in me that oh maybe maybe it's because something was wrong with me and then an adult in in my life at the time uh suggested to me that maybe perhaps i have bad balance <laughs> and that idea you know uh stayed with me for a long long time for probably 10 plus years and i just thought oh you know it's not it's not uh it's it's just me right I, I just can't ride a bike because I have bad balance. That's it. That must be why I can't ride a bike. It's not because, you know, no one ever taught it to me. I never had a bike to practice on. It's because I had bad balance. And because of that belief, I never even bothered to try anymore because why bother? You know, you have this bad belief. And it wasn't until when I was 25 that um, one, it was one Christmas when I was 25, Renee actually bought me my first bike and, and, and I was so excited. I was so, um, I was so grateful that, that she would do that because you know, she, she always knew that there was nothing wrong with me. She, she always, um, <laughs> she, she never believed that, that, you know, I had just bad balance. Um, and, uh, yeah. And, and I took it out and within, I guess, a couple of days, I, you know, I, I picked it up. I picked up the skill of you know riding a bike. It, it was it, it was easy, right? But when you have this belief, when you have this belief that oh, I'm not good enough, or or I just can't do this, then obviously you're you're not going to try, and you're not going to um, um, take the next step forward and, and make that thing happen. So I thought I'd share that story with you, and uh, I don't know what your situation is and what you believe you can or cannot do, but uh, wherever you are and whatever situation you are in, just know that there are in in love and dating relationships, it, it's a skill. 
there are, there are skill component to it and it doesn't matter who you are what situation you're in you can find yourself you can attract the man who's right for you you can attract that relationship you can have a loving and uh, uh, an exciting relationship um, it doesn't matter how bad your um, you know, role models have been in the past it doesn't matter um, you know it doesn't matter if you you've never had any of uh, any attention from men or any um, positive uh, experiences in relationships all right so let's uh, let's talk a little bit about the survey responses um, we had just so many responses. Um, it was ridiculous. Um, Renee and I spent, I reckon, five hours collectively reading through them, and, and we're not even halfway through them. Um, as it turns out, uh, about 44% of all the responses, all the women who responded, um, have been single for longer than three years. And to me, that was... That was surprising. That was shocking because you know three years is a, is a long time, and and uh, and to, to 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 see what they they write and to feel what they feel, um, a lot of them have number one given up hope, um, and they're just basically sick of the whole dating process, and uh, and I really got a, a really deep insight into what women have to go through. Um, when they're single, when they when they're going through the whole dating process, and it's not easy in this day and age, um, especially when you know any dating app or program, um, you know you can just look at a different profile um, with a single swipe. So in this day and age, it's more and more difficult, and especially if you if you're going to use um, uh, online dating, if you're going to use dating apps, then you want to go about it in a specific way. Um, see, here's the thing. Um, if you if you're going, I'm not against online dating whatsoever. I think there are a lot of good men online um, who are also looking for uh, a relationship. But more so, um, I, I want you guys to know that more than just men looking for a relationship, I think a lot of us we we look for things, but we don't really always know what we're looking for. We we want that feeling, but we don't we can't voice it, we can't articulate it. And we just sometimes take what comes, if that makes sense. So a lot of men are on these dating apps. They're they don't really know. I mean it's easy for a woman to say, oh, all guys on on these online dating apps just want sex and just want um, hookups. And, and I, I guess it's easy to see that and, and feel that. And that's a surface level truth. When you get deeper, um, I think we would find that it's not that men are simply looking for just uh, a quick hookup. What they're looking for is to feel the energy. And, and ultimately, I think we all want to feel like we're you know we're falling in love or feel like feel feel like we have that emotional attraction and emotional connection with someone right but unless it's there we don't know how to get from here to there so for most men um the most uh most by default mode is to look for you know, what's good for them which obviously is is sex so I think uh, I think if we can just look through the filter of okay, I know a lot of men just want sex, but that's not who that's not who they are entirely. That's just one part of them. If we can somehow um, draw them in a little bit more and and get away from this superficial surface level thinking and feeling, which obviously online dating promotes, then the, then the possibilities, is, there's so much more that we could potentially do. See, I think for a lot of men, they don't even know how to create that kind of attraction, uh, create that kind of connection with a woman. For most men who are on dating apps, I, uh, you know, and, and for most men altogether, uh, the world of relationships is so foreign. Um, 
especially you know more, the more masculine men they they don't they don't know how to navigate the the waters of a relationship because you know think about men for a second boys growing up who do they aspire to be maybe you know uh, athletes or uh, businessmen they they want to succeed they want to do well they want to you know uh, accumulate and uh, and and create resources for themselves they're not thinking about relationships they're not thinking about um how how do we uh you know how, how to create that kind of relationship they think for most men they think and they assume that if they were somehow successful at some point that the relationship will just happen and as many men would know that it doesn't it doesn't work that way it doesn't just happen um uh, you know just just like that that there's a there's there's a skill component involved and um you know, you, you got to go out there and and know how to talk to women as well and most men don't simply have that skill so coming back to online dating i feel like you know the number one thing here you need to do here if you want to participate in online dating is to not um is to not uh make yourself a commodity to not make yourself a commodity and focus on as we always talk about attraction and connection and how do you focus on that with just a simple platform of online dating well number one you don't want to give away too much information um information is not attraction information is not connection to to build true attraction and connection that takes a lot of back and forth that takes um that takes uh the ability the skill of bouncing back and forth in that playful kind of banter if that makes sense right so um you know i can definitely you know feel for these women especially you know if you're going to do online dating you want to do it smart you want to make sure that um uh, you have a profile set up that you're not giving away too much information that you um that you know you don't want to be a commodity you don't want to be a commodity um in this day and age because you know men are always swiping and and it's easy to get addicted for men to get addicted to just keep swiping and uh you know that kind of superficial um game is not something that you want to participate in i hope that makes sense guys I hope that makes sense um let me just read some of the comments um by the way guys if you have any questions you're welcome to put them down Lorena says I've been single for five years is that normal well it happens I'm learning about myself and almost will be heading to medical school cool good for you um you know it in this day and age yeah look uh, it is definitely not abnormal to be single for a long long time and it's difficult in this day and age because a lot of women are taught to go out there succeed write down your goals and and do you know do achieve uh, great things and i have nothing against that i think it's a great thing to do however the more you focus on your own success the more you write goals down and 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 try and make things work for yourself the less you're able to be attuned to the people around you to be attuned to the energy that is coming your way especially from men and and that could uh, jeopardize your the chances of you creating a connection with someone if that makes sense um so i you know i always tell people and by the way <laughs> it you know i'm sure you've heard of the saying that you know when you expect it uh, least that's when love happens right so when you have all these goals and and uh these these ideas of how you're going to succeed in this day and age then you tend to blindside yourself to the people around you just focus on your own success and i think that is I think that's that's a big mistake that a lot of women make. Now, I'm not against writing goals. I'm not against writing goals at all. Um I think they're very useful in a particular context, but at the same time there's a there's a cost to writing goals, especially if you're uh, you know, if you're a woman and you want to be attuned to the energy that is coming into your life. Um Okay. 
Okay, Amber asks, David, can you please give insight into how to overcome the emotional blockages in certain patterns that are sabotaging and literally repelling? Okay, so one thing that I would always say to women um, is that when you, um, you know, when you've been single for a while and, and some people tell you, oh, you should write a list of the qualities that you want to attract in a man. And and that's okay, that, that has um, its usefulness. However, once you write it down, I would suggest you throw that list away uh, because here's the thing, the the right man, the, the ideal man, the man that who may fall in love with you and you may fall in love with him may, uh, may show up in a very different way to what you've written down. And that's completely okay. That's that's normal. You see, here's here's what tends to happen to us. When we're small, you know, when we're little, when we're kids, when we're kids, we we may feel like we're attracted to someone. And let's say this this man has long hair. In in, in fact, this happened to one of my clients many years ago. She was attracted to, to uh, a guy who had um, you know, a, a particular hairstyle. And, uh, and so for the, for the next 10 years, she found herself in relationships with the same archetype, same type of man with the same kind of hairstyle. In fact, she, I think she was into drawing and she used to draw horses and she made the horse have the same kind of hairstyle. And, and, you know, here's the thing though, <laughs> We, some, you know, we we get tricked by our brain sometimes to think that that's the only type of men who we should be attracted to, or that we need to be attracted to. Whereas, you know, it's it, it, it was, you know, if we can just let go of our expectations and and if we can just start to appreciate, if we can start to appreciate every single man for his masculine spirit, masculine energy, then. My promise is, you know, everything is going to change for you. If we can just let go of the expectations of what a high-value masculine man should should be, should be like, should look like, should feel like, should sound like, then I feel like we can really open our our mind, our eyes to the the possibilities out there. Um, it's uh, you know, for a lot of men, it's it's kind of sad. Because I, I, I've spoken to a lot of single men who, in their 30s, 40s, and 50s, and, um, you know, they're really nice men. They're really nice guys. They, you know, I, I get along really well with them. However, they just haven't found the woman who's right for them. And I feel sad for them. In fact, I have a, a, a friend of mine that I um, knew for many, many, many years, maybe eight years now, from... Um, jujitsu and uh um he's i think in his 50s now and yeah he's single he's a great guy and you know kind of you know jujitsu is a bit of a tough sport but he's a he's a you know gentle soul um but you know he he's single uh, and uh um you know he felt like he should have had kids um, a long time ago, and somehow he's just missed that boat. And it, you know, for a man, it's difficult to to look back and go, "Oh, what could have, what could I have done differently?" Because men men don't have kids in their bodies, right? So, um, so there's there's all these single guys who just don't have the skills or the understanding of where to not just meet women, but how to speak to them, how to create that attraction. And, and I really do feel bad for them. Um, and they they want to have kids, but they just feel like oh, it just it just didn't happen. And for a lot of these guys as well, they may not be your conventional, um, you know, uh, tall, dark, and handsome type of guys. Uh, these guys um, they may be a bit shorter. They they may have different interests. They may have tattoos all over their bodies. You know, if we can just get rid of all our expectations of what. Uh, the ideal man should look like or sound like or feel like, then we can really start to appreciate every one of them for their their masculine spirit. And I do believe that if you can go out there, and this is kind of like, if you haven't seen the movie Shallow How uh, with Jack Black, um, I think Tony Robbins plays a little part in that. Um, do the reverse Shallow How where, you know, you as a woman start to appreciate 
the masculine spirit in every single man that you ever come across, then that is how you can start to um, really get rid of your own emotional blockages in order to to make that uh, make that happen. Hope that makes sense, guys. Um, um, and and it doesn't matter if a man is in his masculine or not. You know, I think for most men, and I, and I mean like 80, 90% of men, they do have a masculine core. Whether they live there or not is a different story, but they do have a masculine core. And it's, it's up to you to see and discover what that masculine core is. Um, you know, it could be uh, a man who, let's say, uh, give you a hypothetical example, who loves to play video games in his spare time. And he's perhaps ashamed of that because grown men shouldn't be playing video games. And, uh, but through those video games, he's able to tap into that masculine core. So that's one example. So it's, it's up to you to see that and to really appreciate it and to let go of your expectations of what a masculine man should and shouldn't do. So I hope that makes sense. Um, Lorena says, you're so right. I'm so focused on myself. I'm becoming so picky in choosing good men and a successful man. Okay, well, let me, let me give you an example in my own life. Um, when I met Renee uh, and when we started going out, um, we were young, like 19, 20-ish. And in terms of success, external success, you know, I was driving a car that was as almost as old as I was. <laughs> and uh, it was, yeah, I don't, I don't believe anyone else drove a car as old as I was driving at the time. And uh, a lot of people looked down on me at the time for it. Um, uh, I didn't have any money. Uh, I didn't have much of anything, um, at the time. And I, I think, you know, but I've always had ambition. I always had, um, drive. I always wanted to, to, to make things happen. And I feel like if you can just nurture that ambition, nurture that masculine spirit inside of a man, then that is way more potential. That is way more valuable for you, for the relationship, for your future than a man who is already successful. There are so many successful people um, um, who didn't get there on their own and who don't have the skills to maintain it. And, uh, you know, it's something that, um, you know, in fact, when I was um, when I first started going out with Renee, her ex was driving like a brand new Mercedes, and I had this uh, 1988 uh, Mitsubishi Magna that I, I just loved to death because it was my first car, and and you know I just feel you know you feel so fond of you know, having your own first car. So um, I think it's it's a, it's a good idea to just let go of those ideas of what you should and shouldn't have, and just feel feel men. For where they're at, and and just drop the masks and just feel for for who they are, and um, there's a really 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 um, good um, YouTube clip actually. Let me see if I can find a. Um, <laughs> um, let me see if I can find a link to this because you know I I, I love this as as a guy I, I love it because um, this is too. Two guys, here we go. Let me, let me just copy the link here. I'll paste it in. So you can check it out, but this is, this, this is two guys in the finals of a video game tournament, right? <laughs> and you look at this you know, chubby, fat kid, adolescent, I don't know how old he was, um, and he's doing everything he could to win and he doesn't give a crap what anyone else thinks. He's chugging down a whole can of, you know, energy drink. And, and then he finally wins and the crowd goes wild. <laughs> and that is, you know, him physically just looking at him. He's probably the least quote unquote masculine thing you can 
think of. Yet at the same time, he's exhibiting what the masculine spirit is all about. And, and if you can really appreciate the masculine spirit in, in, in a man like him, then, you know, I think you can, you can um, really connect with a lot of men because, because that's what most men have to go through. Then they may not be the best looking thing on the outside, but they have that, you know, that, that drive inside of every single man that, and that's the core of who they are. Right. Um, all right, let me just scroll back up. Um, Elma says, am I being outplayed by the competition who is talking in front of camera in suggestive clothing? T teenage girls do it all the time. Okay, so just to address that, you don't want to be a commodity, okay? So the, in fact, um, one lady actually emailed in uh, after our surveys saying that she found um, her man online, I believe. And one of the things that he said to her was he was so glad that she wasn't being too revealing in her profile like so many other women are. And that's what created that connection. Um, number one, you're not a commodity. So, you know, a lot of young women do it for the attention and, um, you know, that that's the game that they're playing and they're not you know, these, these girls aren't really that serious about a long-term relationship anyway. And, you know, that works for them, but you don't want to be in the same, you don't want to play the same game as them, right? So you want a profile that, that creates curiosity, mystery, and intrigue. Those three are the most important things in an online dating profile. Um, not too much information. I would never link, um, you know, like, for example, if you're on Tinder, I would never link your Instagram um, to Tinder. Um, I would, uh, um, never give away too much personal information about yourself. Um, that means not too many photos. Um, but you do want to have a bio. You want to just, you know, talk about what you believe. You want to create that depth of connection early without having to do all the surface kind of stuff that people normally do. Um, Okay, Alexandrian, when meeting guys who already have had a family, they will place a new woman low on their in their priorities what to do. Okay, so you have to respect the fact that, um, you know, they have kids and their kids are important to them. And fair enough, that's how it is. But focus on attraction, focus on connection. That's the most important thing. That's the only thing that you could really do in that situation. Um, it's not your job to... Um, you know, pull him away from his family. That would be silly. That, that, that would be destructive. That would be value taking. So it's your job to add value in whatever way you can. And the best way to do it is focus on the attraction, focus on the connection. Um, Shade on a cool day says a relationship is two parts. Both parties are supposed to bring something into the relationship. Sadly, now the man is expected to do everything. Yeah, look, there are so many expectations out there. And I think those ex expectations occur when there is no attraction, there is no connection. So then it just becomes, okay, here's what I expect, here's what you, you can expect, and it's, it's a trade. And whenever a relationship is based on a trade, it's never going to, uh, it's never going to feel that great. Um, okay, let me, uh, Donna says, I'm in my mid fifties, but tend to attract younger men because I look younger. When they find out about my age, they usually exit the relationship. How can I change that? Okay. So, excuse me. Uh, the most important thing here is uh, well, first of all, I don't know how much younger we're talking about and what stage of life these men are going through. Um, I think the most important thing here is to know, to understand, to to feel what they need, right? What they are looking for and what stage of life these men are in. And I can't answer that question for you. But um, uh, yeah, the... Um, Sometimes, you know, 
two people could be right for each other, but the timing's wrong. And there's nothing you can do about that. And, and you can just appreciate um, the other person for who they are and what they have to go through. You can appreciate the time that you've spent with them, but you can't change the situation. It's it's greater than you. It's bigger than you, right? So you can just be grateful that the interactions happened, the connection happened. Um, you know, at the same time, you can work on uh, building that attraction if it if it is there. Be attuned enough to know how much attraction they feel for you, how much how much how much depth of connection they have with you. Uh, Meech International says, "I am newly divorced. Uh, I'm newly divorced in the last three months. That relationship lasted for twelve years. I'm shocked at how different. <laughs> yeah, dating is is a different is, is completely different right now. Um, I still do believe that the best way to go is to meet people in real life. Um, apps will never, ever, ever replace just." talking to someone face-to-face -face or meeting with someone face-to-face. -face. I, I do believe that if you're going the online route, um, you still, that that could be your strategy 30% of the time, but 70% of the time, you still want to go out there and actually talk to people, feel people's energy. You can't feel people's energy just through you know a phone screen. And you can't create the depth of emotional connection and attraction just through a mobile device. The best you could do there is maybe, um, I would say 30, 40% of emotional attraction, of the full extent of emotional attraction connection on a mobile device. The rest of it you have to do in person. So if you were to connect with someone online, you wanna take that offline as quickly as possible, but in a non pressuring way in a non-pressuring way so instead of let's say going to a coffee date why not go to ikea and pick out a a new doorknob because you need a new doorknob or or some other widget that is totally insignificant but see here's what happens you take the pressure you take the pressure off having to go to a coffee date because the agenda there is to get to know each other and sometimes when there's too much pressure it just kills the attraction. It kills the potential for attraction. And uh, it, it goes back to the, the whole saying of, you know, expectation. When you expect something to happen, when you have that agenda, then that kills the spontaneity of the moment, if that makes sense. So I would always, always, always suggest that you go somewhere where there, there is no pressure. Go to a, a hardware store um, and uh, pick up some sandpaper because you, you have to... Uh, you have to sand down some something. <laughs> um, see, this gives you a chance to get to know someone, but also don't not have the pressure of going on a date. Um, you know, I hate the idea. I hate that the the idea of dating as if you're just you know as if it's an interview or as if it's a it's a way to suss each other out. It, it you know, at the end of the day. Um, real attraction happens real quickly and it happens because you're not expecting it to happen you just fall into it that's why it's called falling in love it's not you know going on a date to, to fall in love it's not planning to love um it's it, it's something that spontaneously happens because you're not pressured into um trying to make something happen hope that makes sense um um um, um let's have a look Transcending soul. Oh my God, I missed the part of missed the start of this already. I hope this is available. Yes, this is going to. The, I think the replay is going to be up as uh, the moment this this ends. So you will be able to watch the start of it um, at a later time. Dominique, when I do online dating, I request to meet within the third email if my new contact doesn't agree. I let him go. If he is interested, he will accept. If he if you look for a fantasy, I let him go. Yeah, you know, uh, I can appreciate why you have that rule, and uh, I hope it works out for you. Um, at the end of the day, um, rules are great. Rules are great when you go into something, when you learn a new skill, when you learn a new ability or a new new way of doing things. You need rules to set boundaries so that you don't go off into Never Neverland. However, as you delve deeper and deeper and have better understanding of 
the interactions. You can you can gauge where the other person is at. You can then start to let go of the rules because you can trust your own instincts. You can trust um, how it feels. And then when you can really be attuned to the other person, you won't need those rules anymore. You can just feel where the other person's at and you can act according to that attunement, if that makes sense. And that is where ultimate power is. Right now, having rules, for example, um, if I was to learn a new, um, uh, let's say, a new a new sport, let's say I'm learning uh, tennis, for example, and I have this rule that whenever the ball goes this way, I've got to you know, do a backhand like this. Well, as you get better, you start to realize, oh, I have so many other choices than just using the backhand. Um, and then you can start to play with the other options and you can, you can play with the, the game rather than just having a, these sets of rules that dictate your every action. So I hope that makes sense. Um, uh, at the end of the day, uh, you know, I'm going to give you an arbitrary scale. If the attraction isn't at least a three or four out of 10, then I don't think there is any, uh, I don't think there's any compelling reason to meet up, right? So once it gets there, um, if both parties have that desire to meet up, fantastic. Uh, you've done your job correctly. Otherwise, there is no point in meeting up anyway. You're going to be disappointed. And uh, it's it's going to, you know, the more the more disappointing meetups you have, the more you're going to become jaded and uh, <laughs> and not want to try. Because it takes a lot of effort to, to get dressed, get out there, meet someone new, and not know what they're going to say or what they're going to do, not, not knowing if they're actually a creep or a weirdo, and, and really putting yourself out there. It takes a lot of energy. So you want to reserve that energy for someone who you actually have some exciting banter, to have some uh, someone you have some you know decent three out of four, uh, sorry, three or four out of ten connection attraction with. I hope that make hope that makes sense. Um, Melina says, how do you screen screen men in the online dating world? They seem normal during the initial online com conversations, but when meeting in person, they, uh, they are creeping me out. Um, a lot of that is perhaps due to the fact that men don't really know how to talk to women. Um, guys, I mean, you have to understand, you have to understand for men, their biggest fear, their biggest, biggest fear when it comes to love, dating women, is how do I speak to women? What if I'm not interesting enough? What if I don't know what to say? What if she thinks I'm a weirdo? <laughs> so, so it's in you know just to understand that that's where they're coming from. They're nervous as shit, and they don't know what to do. They're just hoping for the best, but you know, you know. So I think a good idea there is what I mentioned before. Go somewhere where it's not a date, where you know th there is an agenda to something. And by the way, if you go into a, you know a, an IKEA or a hardware store, that could be like half an hour. That it doesn't have to be long. And you know that it's only going to take half an hour. You can stay longer if you wanted to, but there is a there is a distinct time. There is a distinct time. You get in, you get the stuff you want, you choose it, and then you get out. So there is no agenda. If if it doesn't work out, you're out of there. Um, whereas a coffee date. How long does that go for? It could go for three hours. It could go for a whole day. Um, and, and there's a lot more pressure there to go, oh, you know, if you, if you want to leave, then does that mean you don't like me kind of thing? Um, it becomes a lot more awkward. And the other thing I was going to mention was uh, that start talking about what excites them. And it could be about anything, you know, um, what, uh, if there's nothing that excites them, if they're as boring as a doorknob, then maybe talk about when they were kids, what excited them as when they were kids? Um, did they play video games? You know, did they get up to, you know, something that they shouldn't have gotten up to? Just, just try and find out who they are as a soul and find that masculine spirit inside of them. It could be deep inside of them, but find that out. The more you find that out, the more they, they're going to, 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 to uh, uh, open up and, and share more of what they're passionate about. 
stop talking about small things. Um, what I would suggest is this. Don't ever talk about um, like what you do for work or um, just, just boring stuff. Talk about what you love. Talk about what you're passionate about. Find out what they're passionate about. Um, find out what makes you cry. Find out, you know, the, the, the movie that, that if you only had one movie to watch over and over again, what would that movie be? Because that will tell you a lot about the other person. You know, talk about things that, that move you because at the end of the day, we're trying to connect here. We're trying to establish some sort of deep connection, the, de the depth of connection, and that requires some emotion, right? It's not, you know, don't ever talk about what you do for work. In fact, if, if anyone was to ask me what I do for work, the first thing I would say is, okay, take a guess. I'll give you three guesses. Go ahead. You're, not, you're never going to make it. You, you're not going to guess, or, but go ahead anyway, right? So, so I'm making make guess. It's a game. It's a game. The real value of the, the real, I guess, job description has no value. It, it's not, it doesn't create the attraction. It, it has, it's just, oh, cool, great. You know, the value is in the interaction. The value is in the banter. The value is in, you know, the 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 uh, the passion that you can create in that moment. If that makes sense. So I hope I've uh, answered that question, Melina. Circuit uh, in chance. Sir. Massive question. I met a guy online. We met up and had an incredible connection sexually, emotionally from the start. He confided me about his deeper secrets. Oops, I lost it. Deeper secrets treated me like a queen. Then he turned cold after a couple of dates. Okay. So, um, actually, I, there, there was no question. So, if you want to, if you want to ask a question. You know, um, I know I've addressed this many times in many different ways, but um, there are a lot of smooth talking guys that may make you feel like you have a great connection, emotionally, sexually, physically, whatever, right? That's easy to do, especially if you're a smooth talker. And there's plenty of information websites, programs out there to teach men how to do this smoothly. Um, you know, PUA, pickup artist, that, that is a big area on the internet, right? Uh, so a lot of men um, go through that to try and learn how to be smooth with women. And your job as a woman is to know when it's a little too smooth and, and slow that process down, slow that process down. Because here is the thing, right? As a man, I can tell you as a man that if you, if, if I, or if any man was to sleep with a woman uh, shortly after meeting her, speaking to her, um, connecting with her, then, you know, as, as men, our intuitive response is, that's cool, no problems. However, if you look deeper, there, you, you, you sacrifice the depth of emotional attraction you can build in that moment because you feel like you've shortcutted the process. And if you shortcut the process, then the emotional attraction has no chance to build and develop. Hope that makes sense. Um, you know, if, uh, if Romeo and Juliet slept together on the first date, I don't think the, uh, the book would ever exist. The, the, the play, sorry, the play would ever exist. Anyhow, um, Andy, what should you do when you feel like you're misunderstood, misunderstood in your marriage or your feelings are not being recognized or valued? Great question. Obviously, this is a, in a marriage. Um, I think the first thing here is to, to step back, make the time to connect and feel the other person and, and figure out why does this man not, why is he not understanding my feelings? Is he too busy? Is he overwhelmed? Is he distracted? And if he is, I would always take the path, take the high road, take the path of adding value to his life first so that he's completely just full in every way possible. And from that place, then he'll have a lot more resources 
to feel what you have to feel. And sometimes you may have to tell man, you know, there's nothing to solve. I just need you to be here uh, to, 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 to be with my emotions, to, to create space or hold space for, for my emotions. Um, maybe that's what you need to do. But I would always um, a, a approach it in a value adding way because uh, ultimately that's the only way that that's going to make it work. Um, and, and really, if we want to be understood, I think the best thing we can do is give our understanding first. You know, I think that's the most, most important thing. And that's the toughest thing as well, because we're talking about someone of the opposite sex here. Um, Home Awards Fun Stuff says, my boyfriend tells me he loves me, but he never shows that he makes any, uh, he never shows that he, but he, but he never shows that he never makes contact. I only chase him. Okay. The double negatives got me a bit confused there, but um, so that means he doesn't chase you. You chase him. Okay. What's that telling you? Um, you know, at the end of the day, with things like this, feel in your gut what that feels like. Really make it real for yourself. And that will be all the answer you need. You won't need me to tell you what that means. Amber asks, hey, David, how can, you, how can you deeply connect to the heart and soul of a man? Great, great question. Now, Amber, I'm not sure if you are on our email list or not. I'm not sure if you have um, read the Death of Dating post on Renee's Feminine Woman fan page. Um, but in that post, and it was a quite a long post, in that post, we point uh, we outlined five things that you need to do in order to connect deeply with the heart and soul of a man. And let me just share with you what they are right now. Uh, and, and these are really important, and I can really go into all every single one of these, you know, uh, a lot more. But obviously, we're not going to do that in this uh, this uh, YouTube live session. So number one, you want to feel through. A man's fears and just keep going every man has massive fears whether they show it or not you know whether they have you know a smile on their face whether they're they look like they have everything in control every man has massive fears whatever they are in fact if uh, the more stressed a man is the more fears you know are, are, are um, at the surface for that man so the best thing you could do is to feel the fear not to uh, not to uh, expose the fear, but feel the fear for yourself so that you can relate and understand and be that safe place for him so that so that the real him could show through more and more. So you want to melt away his fears, not by what you say, but just by being who you are. And that's going to make him feel accepted and he's going to open up then. Number two, see and appreciate the masculine energy in every single man that you come across. And instead of just looking at men and looking at what is what is the potential resource there for me to take as a woman or, or, or for the relationship, see the masculine spirit in every single man. And, um, you know, I, um, I recently spoke to two guys um, at, at my gym, um, really lovely guys. They, they just you know, I didn't start conversations with them. They just came up to me and, you know, we got talking. And these two guys, both of them are probably in their 40s, both single, both never had kids. And, you know, I, I feel for them. They're, they're like, they're always at the gym. And, you know, I feel like no one's ever really appreciated the masculine energy in these two guys. And, and you know, they, they're, um, they're good men, right? So, you know, I, I think if you can just look through and see through the masculine energy in, in every single man, the the willingness to to do better, to achieve, to to um, defeat the enemy, to to provide, then you know everything's going to change for you. Okay, number three, um, you don't want to reveal too much about yourself unless it 
directly contributes to the emotional attraction and connection in that moment because the true value is not in the information. True value is not in the information. In fact, we talk a lot about that. I'm going to make a blatant pitch here for high value mindsets. Um, this uh, is now in DVD form. In fact, it's a three DVD set with a workbook. Um, yeah, I talk about that in, in high value mindsets where in, information doesn't mean value, right? And it's it's a lot more valuable to work on the attraction, the connection in that moment rather than thinking that, you know, I, I see so many women, um, especially in online dating profiles, they're just giving away information, but no one cares. No one cares. You're just the profile. Um, so just, just know that it's not in the information. Um, reserve your information for later on. Just work on the attraction and the connection and the information, and the information will come naturally. Number four, be generous with your intent and your time and your energy. So remember, the more value you can add to that person, the, the more value will always come back to you multiplied. So you know, just just give give your energy. Just, just be there and, and really uh, feel who that person is. And last one is be bold and be attuned. So always be testing. Always try to feel where they're at. Always try to to test to see where the other person's at. Um, if you feel like you have this great connection with someone, that doesn't mean that the other person feels the same way about you, right? Um, going back to that client that I had years ago who loved men with this type of haircut, just because you feel a certain way about them because they're your archetype doesn't mean that they feel the same way about you. So you always want to be testing. You always want to know where they're at emotionally. You want to push and pull and see if they come forward. If you push, see if they respond in the appropriate way. If you pull, see if they come to you. That's what you gotta do. And the initial process of attraction is a dance of push and pull. So I hope that makes sense. Um, hope that makes sense, Amber. Let me just get a drink. Tutu says, I'm on a long distance relationship with a guy. We meet each other every month in the past year. I want to settle down with him, but I don't know how to raise this up without putting too much pressure on him. Um, I think it's obviously something that you have to um, discuss in person. It's not something that you can do um, just online. So long distance relationships are tough. Um, very, very tough. And the, the best thing you could do is spend more time together. Now, of course, not all long distance relationships will end up um, happy or end up together. Um, but the best thing there for you to do is to spend as much time together as, as you possibly can. Um, and work on just, you know, just, just have future plans. And I, I know that sounds so simplistic and sometimes overly, um, Overly, uh, what's the wrong thing of overly um, uh, optimistic, I guess, because that may not uh, be appropriate for the situation. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, try and save as much of the attraction and connection as you can. And then, and, and then, um, you know, just, just try and connect with him and see where he's at and then go from there. Transcending Soul says, really feel like it's important to put across put across this point, but I hate the thought and the feeling of dating, getting to know new people from a logical sense. I'm seeking living in the moment. Yeah, exactly. It's it's almost like when you're when you have this idea of you got to meet new people and get to know them. There's th that agenda, that that expectation that sort of gets in the way. If you just, you know, for example, st stumbled across someone and, uh, um, you know, for example, you're at the supermarket and and you dropped. Uh, a punnet of strawberries and, and a man comes and helps you, you know, that's unexpected. And, and then you can start a conversation from there. Whereas if you're just getting to know people, it, it just puts too much pressure on everyone to, um, for, for anything good to, to happen.
uh, what about a man who says he just wants some things to be felt and not said? I'm not sure what the context there is. Uh, I'd like to find out what kinds of sports they like. They like to see if that could be a connection or activity he likes. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a question, Lindsay. Um, Home Awards Fun Stuff asks, question, is there a faithful man out there at out there at seems like guys lost after all girls? I'm not sure what you're asking there. Galila, my boyfriend of three years, we live together, does not show any concern or compassion when I'm sick. This is hurtful. I'm sure it would be. Um, my question is why isn't he? Has he, you know, has he never shown any compassion? Or is that just a rule? that he somehow adopted that if someone is sick, that you just don't show any compassion because, you know, we all we grow up in our different families and we have different rules, right? Um, for some families, you know, you do a certain thing this way and for other people, you do it that way. Um, and that could definitely cause clashes. So it's not about the act per se, but it's about the reason why, the intent behind why, and, uh, something for you to be attuned enough to, to know exactly why he does what he does. Uh, Mara asks, my boyfriend has commitment issues. How can I help him overcome his fears and prove the value of our relationship without feeling like I am trying to convince him we are good together? Well, that's a very big question here. It's probably a little bit outside the scope of this live, YouTube live. Um, we do have certain programs. Oh, there's Renee. <laughs> we do have certain programs that address that particular um, issue. We have a program called Commitment Triggers. Oh, sorry, that's my blog. Commitment Control Two um, that addresses commitment issues. We do also have um, uh, Renee actually has a DVD out called Becoming His One and Only. If you haven't picked up the DVD, I suggest you do so. This DVD could be yours for free. Just go to bhoodvd.com, pick it up. There's so much great stuff in this one DVD and you know, get it for free. It's on us. Um, yeah, it, it, um, at the end of the day, commitment comes down to um, you know, how the man sees you. And, and if a man sees you as his one and only, then the, the commitment process becomes a lot smoother. Christine Ann Mann says, "Hi David, how do you connect back with an ex if you haven't got if you haven't got any connection for a long time?" Um, well, that's something that you have to build back up, isn't it? It's uh, you know just see where they're at, and uh, um, if the conversation flows, then then great. If it doesn't, then you know it, it wasn't meant to be. So it's not again, it's, it's not always easy. Uh, people tend to be at different points in their lives and some people's lives, you know, they, they cross paths once and then never again. So that's just the way it is. All right. Um, Caroline Lala, when a man is bisexual lying about it and is a narcissist, you can be all of those things you mentioned, and it doesn't matter who you are. They'll never see it. They aren't capable. Guys my own age seem to be going after younger women. I go to places to meet guys near my own age. I don't online date. Meeting men is tough, especially with younger men chasing them. Where do I meet them? All right. Um, too many young women think an older man will financially take care of too many, sorry, too many young women think an older man will financially take care of her, but they, they won't. Um, yeah, absolutely. There are just as many irresponsible, financially irresponsible older men as there are younger men. Those women need, uh, need to get an education and make their own money. Where can I meet men over 45 without those women? Okay, so there are a lot of single men of that particular age range. Um, and a lot of them probably wouldn't be hanging around online dating apps um, because that generally attracts a younger crowd. 
what you have to um, think about, and I don't know where you live, but start thinking about where do single men of that age hang out? And it doesn't even have to be single because every, uh, you know, uh, a 40 year old married man would have 40 year old single ma uh, male friends. Um, what I would suggest here is this find clubs, find clubs to join that are um, dominated by males, a lot of males. Um, so like a sporting club, for example, that, that is uh, mostly males. And in those clubs, uh, especially like tight-knit clubs, um, men tend to uh, sort of call that those clubs their second home because they feel accepted. They don't have to be they don't have to be someone they're not, and they do something that they're passionate about. For example, you know, I've been doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for a while now, and I know that there's always in every club that you go to, there's there's always single men of that particular age range, let's say between 35 to 50. Um, they're there because first of all, they're single, they have a lot of time, they may not have a family, or they may be divorced, and they want to spend their spare time on something that they're passionate about, a hobby. And so if you and there a lot of these clubs have women only classes and and mixed classes as well. So if you can join in and 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 go to where these single men are hanging out um and you know that would you know massively increase the the uh the likelihood of uh, a connection being made. Now, um, yeah, like think about where these types of men would hang out. That is, uh, that is what you've got to really think about. Like if I was to draw, for example, a Venn diagram, you know, you'd have two circles. And for most men, especially in that age group, they've already established their routines. So they have, you know, their job, their career, their mission, and then they have their hobbies. And with their hobbies, you know, they're not, you know, most men, they're not going to go to bars and, and clubs, uh, you know, at that age. Uh, they, they're just over it. You know, they know how superficial that scene can be. And they just want to do what they're passionate about. They, they value their own time. So you're going to find them in their own little, uh, let's call it comfort zone, or let's call it uh, uh, places that they habitually go to. And those places are usually not what women habitually go to because women have different hobbies, different different interests. And you know, that's if these two circles don't ever overlap, like in a normal Venn diagram, then you're not going to be able to uh, meet any of these single men. And there are plenty out there. There are plenty of good-hearted men out there who who have no idea how to find women either. Right, so one place I would suggest is these these clubs. Um, I, I love martial arts because with martial arts comes this, um, I guess, code of conduct of respect um, and and honor and all these things. I think that that's really really good. Um, and these clubs tend to be a lot better than let's say your local gym because. A gym doesn't have that sense of people come and go. They don't, it doesn't have that sense of family. It doesn't have that sense of um, community, whereas a club would. So go to where these men are hanging out because these men, you know, they, 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 did, they just go to their own little spheres of um, you know, their, their life and they don't really get out of that much at all. Um, yeah, so I hope that makes sense. That's one place that I would suggest, and uh, martial arts is one, but there's so many different types of clubs out there um, that would attract, let's say, a 35 to 50-year-old um, single man. Um. So many of these men are married and some lie about that and waste time. Yeah, I can completely understand. Um, yeah, it's it's not always easy to find the truth, especially especially in an online environment. Um, 
that's where also when you're in a club situation, there's so much accountability that no one's going to be able to lie and get away with it because everyone knows each other. Um, whereas, you know, anyone has, could, could put up a different persona online and get away with it. Um, look, there, I would suggest, I would suggest moving away from the popular sports like hockey, uh, for you, Caroline in Canada. And because obviously a lot of younger women are probably, uh, on that scene. Um, why don't men try harder? Here's the thing, right? Here's the thing that you have to understand. Men can have kids at almost any age. Now, yeah, of course, the quality declines. You're not going to be as energetic. You're not going to be able to look after them. But in a man's intuitive brain, he he thinks, oh, I can have kids at any time. I have no reproductive timeline, right? So there's none of that urgency. They just hang out where they're comfortable. And, you know, it is just as difficult to go outside of your comfort zone as a man as it, it is for a woman, except women tend to have more of this sense of urgency or wanting to, to be in that, that, um, that, that relationship because I think it's in more of uh, in, in the feminine nature to, to, to have that. Um, so yeah, men, men just don't have the same um, extent in terms of pressure or drive to do so. Um, for most men, you know, I can put myself in the position of a 50 year old single male and, if I look back on my life and go, oh, I didn't have kids, that's sad, but oh well, it just didn't happen. You know, I don't know why it didn't happen. It just didn't happen. It just, you know, because men don't have kids in their own bodies. So you can't control that process anyway. So for men, it's like, oh, I had kids. They just popped out. They just came, came about somehow, or they didn't come. And I don't know why. It's not, you know, there's, it, it's harder for men to really directly have that emotional association with, okay, you know, relationship, family, kids, love, etc. It doesn't flow as easily. So I hope that makes sense. Um, so yeah, I, I think definitely check out some, you know, you're in Canada. There's, there, there are a lot of other clubs. I, I know there are martial arts clubs up there. Um, you know, for a lot of men, uh, you know, they, they, they just want to pursue what they're passionate about. They're, they're sick of dating. And, and a lot of men in that age bracket will probably feel like, um, you know, a lot of younger women or women are just trying to take. And they're sick of that kind of dynamic of women trying to take or take their resources. Um, so, you know, if you can show up and understand their situation and, and uh, have have value to add, then I think you can really create a deeper connection there. Um, oh yeah, I, I get that men should not have children when they're older. That can be definitely unhealthy for the child. I definitely get that. But intuitively, that's not what men understand, right? Um, because it is possible for a 90 year old man to have kids it is not possible for a 90 year old woman to have kids in fact the oldest man to father a child i believe was 93 or 94 he was an indian farmer apparently according to the internet <laughs> so you know so it's a different level of uh it's a different level of emotional association in your body it's 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 not logical this is not logical um this is not logical talk we're, we're discussing here um, Jennifer Lodge Livernoy, I hope I pronounced that correctly. What is your best advice for trying to connect to a man with a dismissive avoidant attachment? We've been dating for three years, but he continues to make himself available to go out with other women. Okay. So what does your gut tell you about this situation? And if this has been going on for three whole years, then my guess is things are not progressing at all, right? And uh, and unless you do something to 
inspire something different. It doesn't look like anything is going to change. And to me, that sounds like he's placed you in the, what I would call, one of many basket. And this is something that we talk a lot about. This is why you know, we spent months putting this together, becoming his one and only, because when a man uh, sees, meets a woman, you know, he subconsciously puts you in one of two categories. You're either in his one of many category, which you never can uh, commit to. And, and this is a category where a man could just dump you at any stage because, you know, you're not that valuable at all. And he's, you know, obviously dating other women, or you could be in the category of one and only in which then he would not want to pursue other women because all his eggs are in your basket per se, um, or his resources or his attention is invested in that one woman. So these are the two reproductive strategies for men. And women obviously have th their own um, two different reproduct reproductive strategies. Um, but but it's, it's important to understand that from a man's perspective. Uh, Rachel, hello, Rachel. Um, hope you received that mug, by the way. I think we, I think you won a, was it a mug? It was a mug. Hope you received it. Um, for an online dating profile, you said, don't give too much information. Would you, would you say that including a picture of yourself in a swimming suit is also giving away too much information? Okay. So, um, so here is, uh, here is what I believe. The, the most important thing here is to, okay, you, you don't want to be a commodity on any platform. You don't want to start competing with other women who are showing their boobs or butt. That is just the wrong way to go because, you know, then you just become a pair of boobs and, you know, a butt. You don't want to do that. You, you don't want to, um, be the, uh, what's the, what's the expression here? The, um, uh, the lowest, the lowest denominator. I don't think that makes sense. You don't want to undercut other women just to be the cheapest. So to, to get the most attention that that's what I'm trying to put across. Um, oh, good. You received the mug. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, so rather, I mean, I understand that you may want to have a um, full-length picture of you, and that's completely okay. You don't want anything to be suggestive uh, because then you're playing the wrong game here. In online dating, what you want is to create a connection. What you don't want is just cheap attention because ultimately that's what a lot of women do, and that's why they put uh, pictures of themselves in skimpy clothing um, for that ego boost. And, uh, but, but you got to realize that that attention is not attraction. That attention is not love. That attention is worthless. Really it's worthless, especially in an online environment. Um, so what I would suggest is, yeah, uh, don't be suggestive. Um, uh, in terms of, uh, profile images, um, you want to have a good selection of different type of profile images that give the impression of mystery, curiosity, and intrigue. Okay, I was actually going to put together a, uh, a just a little short program on the high value profile. Let me know if you're interested in something like that. We can create that in the next couple of months. Um, it's something that I think would really benefit a lot of women in terms of what you should and shouldn't put in your profile pictures and what you should put in your bio as well. Like for example, no one cares what you do for a job. They don't. Um, uh, I'm sure it's, inf it's information that's going to come about as you, as the relationship grows, but it's not important as the first thing. I think, I'd rather you put down um, information about what you believe in, what you're passionate about, what you just love about life, about you know what, what's your t favorite TV show, t character, what you're really passionate about, rather than what you do for a living, um, and and the fact that you know it, it, what we believe that evokes so much more emotion than what we do. So. I hope that makes sense. Um, and I hope that answers your question, Rachel. Um, Caroline, 
should a female of 47 year old consider online dating and what sites are safe? Uh, in terms of safety, the most important thing here is to, re it's not about the site per se, it's about um, just getting to know the environment, getting to know people, and obviously <laughs> um, some basic safety rules. Don't give away too much personal information. Don't give away your credit card information. Don't send any checks to any Nigerian prince, no matter how much money he promises you you know all these things should be very uh common sense um uh, common sense safety precautions that you want to take just for being on the internet right um the five most popular online dating sites and apps uh, from our survey are, are quite clear uh, number one was match.com number two tinder and then three four five are um Bumble, um, uh, eHarmony, and uh, OkCupid. Uh, so, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, don't do Tinder if, if, uh, if you don't feel comfortable. That's completely, completely okay. Um, you, and the people on Tinder tend to be a younger crowd, and they tend to... Um, you know, it tends to breed that swipe culture as well. Um, yeah. Uh, Cindy says, I'm dating a widow. Uh, I'm confident that we're having a good time, but I know he's haunted on how much he feels he can commit to me after nine months of dating. Yeah, look, that's always going to happen. And, and it doesn't matter who you are. With every single man, there's going to be times where he's going to feel like, oh, you know, commitment. Oh, I don't know. Um, it's, it's intuitive for men to have resistance when it comes to commitment. That's completely uh, normal. So the only thing that's really going to overcome it is the depth of the emotional connection and the depth of attraction. That's it. And from that place, you know, you'll be able to get through to him. You'll be able to understand where he's at, where he's coming from. And, uh, and, uh, work through those uh, those intuitive masculine responses and resistance uh, together. Sue asks, why would my crush who likes me but will not allow himself to proceed? He's always interrupting my conversation with other guys he feels threatened by. Yeah, look, for most men, like, what do you say to women? It's, 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 it's daunting. And the number one fear for men is to start a conversation with a woman because – Man, who, who knows what would happen? She could reject me. And if she rejects me, I'm going to look like a fool. And if she doesn't reject me, but, you know, if she's, uh, you know, that, that, that may also um, uh, be, be something that other men will be looking at me and other men may think that I failed because she, she, she may not have a, a positive uh, interaction with me. So uh, from that perspective, um, it takes some skill for you to know how to draw that man in, and I, you know, I think it's a it's a great thing for women to start the interaction with men because men are super fearful when it comes to starting that interaction. Um, so for women, it's easy to do that and do it in a high value way that makes you look like um, you're not trying to like start a conversation. Like, um, for example. Uh, oh my God, I love those shoes. Uh, where'd you get them from? You know, just a canned opener. I think that's what, um, I guess, what you, you could call it. Like something that opens a conversation that has no agenda, that you're just asking for an opinion or a uh, just just a, a, a agendaless question, I guess. Um, and that would um, break the ice for you and... Um, you know, if, if the connection, if the conversation flows, then great. If it doesn't, then you haven't lost anything for starting that conversation. You haven't like risked too much, if that makes sense. Um, all right. All right. Uh, Jennifer asks, are you promoting your tape to help with dating a man that has a fear of intimacy along with being dismissive? And yes, I understand the the one of many analogy, probably time to let go and move on. Yeah, look, you know, 
feel what you feel in your gut and that will tell you everything you need to know. Um, I'm not in your shoes, so my answers are going to be kind of uh, not as attuned as you would be. Um, and are, are we promoting our tape to help dating a man? Okay, so I uh, oh, I think you meant um, this DVD. Uh, I think that's that's what you mean. Um, we have so many, we, we've published so many programs. Um, I'm sure there is a program for you, Jennifer. If you want to go to shenwaymedia.com slash all courses, um, I think there's a hyphen between all and courses. Uh, you can check out the all the courses that we have available right now. In fact, I will post a link for you so that you don't have to spell it out yourself. Um, yeah, we have many courses. In fact, I was thinking alongside the high value profile, uh, it's going to be a short course. Um, I was going to think about putting together a more comprehensive program type, um, designed to help women meet, uh, attract, and connect with high value and commitment friendly men. If you would like something like that, just type in yes and let me know. Um, I feel like that is something that is uh, going to be very valuable, um, especially if you're single, if you're dating, if you're uh, trying to navigate through this whole, this new world of dating. Um, if you're interested in something like that, let me know. It's going to be you know, a, a bit more of a comprehensive course where we talk about where to go to meet these men, what you need to do, how to break the ice, how to connect with them. Um, that eliminates their fears of talking to women because you know, for most men, it's it's uh, it's daunting. It's really daunting. Even if you're in the same gym, in the same club, in the same whatever, um, for them to approach you, for most men, it's uh, they they rather stay in their comfort zone and uh, not say hi. Um, um, so, yeah. Um, And I think what we do is maybe we will put together this program um, early next year, maybe in January, February, um, and uh, make sure that you are signed up to our email list so that we can um, inform you when that is going to be launched. Why do men of other races follow you and sometimes slightly stalk and never say a word? <laughs> Well, because it is hard for men to, you know, what do you say? What do you say to a woman without making themselves feel like a creep? And that's the biggest problem that men have. Um, and as well as the number two fear after the approach is, how do I ask her out without looking like a creep? Which, what if she says no? Um, so, you know, men have to go through all these fears themselves. And, you know, that... That is definitely a barrier between you know, men and women. Um, and and if, we can, if you can cross that barrier, if you can just break the ice for the man so that he doesn't have that fear anymore, then I can guarantee you know, he, he's going to want to talk to you. He's going to uh, be, feel a lot more comfortable approaching you in the future. Um, I think we'll end this YouTube live soon hope you've gotten some value out of it um let me just read what rachel has said i've traveled to the mediterranean for three years noticed a big difference in men abroad for example like u.s men have stopped pursuing women in public places any thoughts on this i think it's just the culture of political correctness um you know i think for a man to talk to a woman on the street for no reason at all um it's almost going to feel like oh he's a predator or he's got bad intent. Um, I think that culture, it, 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 that political correctness culture is kind of rife in places like the U S and men get scared. You know, <laughs> you don't want to be called something nasty for just trying to say hi. Right. So, um, men, men are scared. 
for example, men abroad do make the first move in public, where in the US, I feel like they, they're starting to switch where the women have to make the first move. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's the whole, like, um, like for the most part, I think uh, men don't have bad intent, like for the most part. Um, there are weirdos out there that you have to be careful of, but uh, but but uh, yeah, for for most men, um, they just don't know how to how to um, approach a woman, and second of all, they don't want to be seen as the uh, the the predator that that uh, that approached the woman. <laughs> um, so I, I do believe that if you can, as a woman, if you have the ability to to break the ice without looking like you're uh, trying to chat the man up. I think that has so much value in this day and age. Um, even if you break out of that conversation and, and you, you go your separate ways, that man, if he sees you again, he's going to feel so much more uh, comfortable talking to you the next time um, because you've already broken the ice for him. And you can say something as simple as, you know, I love your shoes. You know, uh, I think I'm going to get my brother a pair of those for Christmas. Something so simple, something that has no... Uh, no agenda behind it, if that makes sense. Um, Sue says, thank you for answering my questions. Really cleared up my mind. My crush tells me that he has he has a girl, but already uh, earlier he said he he said he's looking for a date for dinner. I, I can tell he's lying. Um, yeah, trust your gut instinct. Um, it's always going to be the most valuable thing you have. U.S. men are great compared to Canadian men. They don't approach women at all. Yeah, it's just, you know, the, I guess the political culture and the, the, that, that affects how men and women act, especially in public places. Um, uh, you know, I think, I think it is definitely acceptable for you as a woman to approach men, break the ice not in a non uh uh, non, uh, without any agenda, I guess. Um, if you can do that successfully, you know you're going to have men flocking to you because men are just scared. How, how, how do you speak to a woman without you know everyone in that public space looking at you, thinking that you're a creep? Um, Amber says, "Ladies, I have purchased two courses from David and Renee, and the content was very valuable and worth the little cost." Well, thank you, Amber. Um, I have. I have more respect for the masculine spirit because I understand them more. Um, thank you, Amber, for, for that. Um, you know, we have so many wonderful emails from women um, that comes in every day, and we just don't, we haven't had the time to really sort them out and actually post them up somewhere. Um, but we get these great feedback every, every single day. And uh, so go to the All Courses page. If you're not on the email list, sign up somehow. Um, in fact, we just, um, anyhow, let's just sign up in using one of the many different ways. Um, we're looking to publish a couple of more courses in the next, um, in the next few months, but if you haven't picked this up yet, do so. This is absolutely free. Pick it up. Just, uh, just, you know, all we ask is for you to pay for the shipping, which is like a few dollars and the amount of content on this, um, uh, it's going to blow your mind. Um, uh, the amount of content is, is probably exceeds what I was able to give in this in the last hour and a half. So um, go check it out. Um, and for anyone watching who have not taken our course uh, titled uh, "Understanding Men," that's the one that I would always advise women to go through first because it has some of the most fundamental understanding and the foundations of what you need to know about the masculine perspective. So. Always go through that first. I think it's a, it's a great start. All right, guys. I am starving. <laughs> I am so hungry. Um, I think we're going to wrap this workshop up right now. Um, it, it's uh, Thank you for tuning in. Thank you. For, uh, um, and uh, we will be sending this DVD out to the, I think, the three winners that we had earlier on in this live um, workshop. Uh, just make sure that you do... Uh, connect with our team so that we can we can get that organized um hope you enjoyed it and uh, maybe we'll do more of this in the future um 
Um, uh, Caroline says, in this city, the men here have a scowl on their faces and make that makes them very hard to approach. <laughs> yeah, I can I can imagine. Um, I, I can definitely imagine. Um, you know, you, you just ask them for the time or ask them something something small. And even if you don't get a positive response, that's okay because you've taken a step outside of your own comfort zone and you've opened up a little window to feel who they are. And even if they're stressed out of their mind, at least you can you can appreciate that. You know, they're stressed for a reason. They're stressed. They're, something in their life is causing them that much stress that they're walking around with that sour face on on 24-7. You know, you can appreciate that, right? Um uh I don't have a CD player. Can can you get that DVD in a format? Okay, so when you get the DVD, there is an option to upgrade to the platinum version where you can get the Download, downloadable uh, streaming format, high definition streaming format, as well as a workshop that accompanies the DVD. So there, there is that option. So, um, but that's uh, exclusive to the platinum version of the becoming his one and only DVD. Um, um, all right, all right, all right. All right, guys, we are going to end this live workshop. Hope you've enjoyed it. Um, uh, yeah, we have uh, quite a few new videos um, that are scheduled to be published uh, on this channel as well as Renee's channel. If you're not subscribed to Renee's channel, do so. It's The Feminine Woman. You can't miss it. Um, we have some really really cool videos uh, coming up and uh, we put a lot of effort into the production value of these um, videos. So I think you're really going to enjoy them. And uh, in the meantime, I think we will plan to put together a program for all the single ladies out there who uh, want to know how to attract, meet, attract and connect with a high value commitment friendly man We'll have that organized very, very soon. So make sure you're on our email list and we can inform you of when that is going to be launched. All right, guys, that is all from me. I hope you have a lovely day or night wherever you are. And uh, I will see you again next time. Uh, until then, take care and uh, sending you love wherever you are. All right, guys, talk soon.